The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. In-depth, investigative. This is KXAN News Today. Our best chance of rain so far this month arrives tomorrow. Good morning, I'm Tom Miller. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sally at Mondays Running. Get you ready for that today and the rest of your work week. Kristen is here with the latest. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody at home. And if you're listening to our podcast, good morning to you. Let me show you what's going on with your forecast because we've got big changes on the way. We begin with a look at our radar. Not showing anything yet. This is probably going to look much, much different 24 hours from now as we're tracking our next big weather maker. Live look outside or what will see landscape supplies weather camera there in southeast Austin showing us the skyline fog. Not an issue this morning. We do have Cool temperatures, though, I would say downright chilly for most of us. 41 degrees right now with humidity at 55%. Our temperatures area wide in those 30s and 40s, if not even a couple of 20s sneaking in there in the hill country. 29 degrees in Fredericksburg, 39 Georgetown, 36 Bastrop, 34 for our friends in Lockhart. Looking at the difference between right now and 24 hours ago, it's even cooler than what we had Sunday morning. Temperatures down about 5 to 15 degrees, but we will rebound back to the low 60s today, 61 degrees that afternoon high, close to normal, maybe just a couple of degrees shy of average. We're going to see clear skies to start, but the, the clouds will actually increase through the day, and that's going to be on the later part of today. East winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Y'all, we got rain chances to talk about. Look at that. Tomorrow, it is almost a guarantee you see rain tomorrow morning into the afternoon. We are pretty confident that this storm system is finally going to bring us some mud needed rain chances. We'll talk about who, what, where, where we could see the heaviest rainfall of one to two inches. We're going to be talking about those details coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Kristen. This morning, the search is over for a man accused of killing 10 people in a mass shooting. Happened at a dance club outside Los Angeles. Officers say the shooter took his own life as SWAT team members surrounded his van just hours after the attack. This happened late Saturday night after thousands of people gathered for the Lunar New Year, the festival. NBC's Jay Gray tracks the investigation. Additional units requested multiple victims, gunshot wounds. A spray of gunfire cuts through a packed Monterey Park dance club. The scene chaos as police first arrive. And my young officers did their job, searched for a suspect, and then came back and had to deal with the carnage that was inside. And it was, it was extensive. 10 dead, 10 more wounded. The suspect, according to police, on the run, showing up at a similar ballroom in nearby Alhambra about 20 minutes later where he's confronted by people inside the club. And he was disarmed uh, by two community members who I consider to be heroes because they saved lives. As he escapes, witnesses get a glimpse of his vehicle. They have this white cargo van completely surrounded right now. Police tracking it down 12 hours later in Torrance. They're breaching the van. Inside, 72-year-old Hu Kan Tran. The man police say is responsible for the killing spree, dead from what appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. According to investigators, evidence inside the van ties Tran to both locations. What it doesn't do is help to explain how or why it happened. And it does little to ease the concerns of this frightened, grieving community. Hearing this happen now is just very shocking, very, very, um, very sad, you know, um, because you, it's just confirming that there's no safe place anymore. We ask for your mercy into those rooms. Jay Gray, NBC News, Monterey Park, California. Meantime, a dozen people are hurt after gunfire broke out at a Baton Rouge nightclub on Sunday morning. This shooting happening less than an hour after the one in Monterey Park. Police believe the shooting was a targeted attack on some, but not all victims. They don't know the shooter's motive and are still looking for the person. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice is still reviewing the fourth set of classified documents after a search of President Biden's home was uncovered even more documents, some dating back to his time in the Senate as vice president. NBC's Ali Raffer reports from Delaware on how this could escalate the political and the legal situation for President Biden. 
Good morning. We're tracking new fallout over the White House's latest bombshell, announcing late Saturday that more classified materials have been found at President Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home after an exhaustive 13-hour search on Friday. The FBI conducting that search without the need for a warrant and at the invitation of President Biden's personal legal team. And now reaction from both sides of the aisle is flowing in, growing questions for this White House after this new controversy. We'll have all of that and more coming up on the Today Show. If you are thinking about putting your house on the market, you might want to wait a bit here. Yeah, just a little bit. Zillow released numbers for the end of 2022, and homes are not selling for as much as they used to. In November, just 11% of listings sold for higher than the asking price. Zillow says homes stayed on the market an average of 68 days, and that is more than any other major metro area nationwide. Meantime, Austin has plummeted from Zillow's list of hottest real estate markets. It now ranks 30th nationwide for 2023. All of last year, we were 10th, and the year before, number one. You can check out the current hottest markets right now on KXAN.com. To give you some perspective here, it comes as the National Association of Realtors says 2022 was the slowest year for home sales in nearly a decade. More than 5 million previously occupied homes were sold in the U.S. last year. That is a decline of nearly 18% from the year before. Even so, the median national home price jumping more than 10% to more than $380,000. A new medical study outlining the dangers of sitting too long. Some easy changes, though, that you can do to improve your health. And why one of Austin's most popular spots might soon charge you to park. Welcome back. If you find yourself sitting a lot, you may want to find a way to get on your feet more. There's a new medical study looking at the dangers of sitting too much. Savannah Sellers has some small changes, though, that you can make to improve your health. The next time you're about to send your coworker an email, think about taking a walk over to their desk instead. That simple movement might actually be good for your health. A new study published in the Journal of the American College of Sports Medicine found a short stroll at work every half hour could help with the harm that comes with prolonged periods of sitting. We had participants come to our lab and sit in our lab for eight hours. Each day they came, we tried a couple of different walking strategies to see what worked best in terms of offsetting the harms of sitting. So we found that a five minute walk every half hour reduced blood sugar levels by over 60% and it also reduced blood pressure. We also found that a one minute walk every hour also reduced blood pressure. Not moving around comes with health risks, even to people who regularly exercise. We're talking increased stress to the back, neck, arms, and legs. For those who hunch, that can overstretch the spinal ligaments and strain the spinal discs. It can also have some serious long-term dangers, things like a higher risk of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, even early death. And even if you have a standing desk, that might not be enough since being in one position all day isn't good. So the key here is to move as often as you can, because if your daily activities are short and intense enough, they can improve your health. Take this second study published in Nature Medicine that found even small snippets of exercise, like dashing up the stairs or weaving between commuters, adds up. Those who engaged in one or two minute bursts of exercise three times a day saw a nearly 50% reduction in cardiovascular mortality risk. Researchers also saw around a 40% reduction in the risk of dying from cancer and all causes of mortality. So next time you're sitting for a while, remember, the human body is built to move. So get going. Austin is a top destination for bachelorette parties. Why so many brides-to-be say goodbye to the single life here. This KXAN News Podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to ShelfGenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. Hey, welcome back. It is 444 on this Monday morning live look at downtown Austin. We appreciate you being here with us on KXAN News today. 
you may see some more brides to be out in Austin. City's becoming a top destination for bachelorette parties. We look back at Google Trends for the term bachelorette within the Austin area. Over the past year, Austin saw search peaks in mid-September. One woman breaking into the business of party planning is now trying to keep up with demand. She sat down with our Kelsey Thompson on what makes Austin so party friendly. What do you yeah. think it is about the city that really makes it such a great environment and space for folks who are wanting to have that really fun getaway weekend? Absolutely. I think the big thing that changes Austin or sets Austin apart from like a Nashville or a Scottsdale, those big bachelorette places are Austin can kind of cater to anyone. If you have a bride who's an outdoorsy gal, go to Mount Bunnell and do a little hike there. If you have somebody that's like a little more chill, you can go to the Barton Springs pool and just have like a day there. If you have a bride that's like, have wants to have a good time, go to Rainy Street or go to Sixth Street. It's kind of like the best of all the worlds here in Austin. We have great food, we have great restaurants, we have great scenery, pretty much anything that you could want, Austin has. So I think more and more people are hearing about that, whether it's through social media or just word of mouth, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And so I think we will continue to see more and more bachelorette parties over years to come. And I wanted to talk a little bit more, Mallory, about what you were just mentioning a few moments ago about how important it is for y'all to really cater to the local economy here in Austin. Um, you know, what do those partnerships or that sort of collaboration look like? And why was it so important to you that for your business, you really wanted to help champion some of these locally owned institutions as part of it? Yeah, so I know what it's like to start a small business from the ground up. It's not easy. And having that community where you're helping each other out is kind of how my business branched. And so I try to do the same thing for everybody else. I know when I'm going to visit a city, I want to go to like the local places that really make that city what it is. So I try to give my groups that same experience where they're going to Austin, they're getting like the best barbecue, or they're staying in those like hotels that are like owned by really awesome salt of the earth Austin people. So um, we partner with, like I said, restaurants, hotels, bars, and we kind of, it's kind of like a big ecosystem that helps everybody out. So the restaurants will give like the bride a free drink. So the group is getting something like a little perk out of it. It looks great on us because we create this like relationship between the restaurant and the group. And so kind of everybody gets a little something out of it. I could see how lots of people would choose Austin mm -hmm. to, you know, as a little getaway to go party. Yeah, and, and not even just bachelorettes. My sister's fiance is having his bachelor party here in Austin yeah. in May. So there, there's so much to take advantage of, you know? You certainly see it if you're on Rainy Street or Sixth Street. I feel like those are yeah. the two places that are just yeah, you can bachelor, spot him. Yeah. bachelorette party <laughs> havens in or Austin. Any Friday on Lake Travis, too, <laughs> I think, <laughs> when we true. get into the summer. Let me show you what's going on outside this morning. We've got a clear start to the day. Radar not showing anything. Satellites not giving me a good picture yet, but we can see our next storm system. This thing's going to continue to dig to the south, roll right on top of us tomorrow. We've got a good chance of rain coming our way less than 24 hours from now. Temperatures cold this morning, 30s and 40s. You want to make sure you've got that jacket on. Kind of bites a little bit. We were chill yesterday, but this morning puts the exclamation point on the fact that we are still in winter. We are at 61 degrees this afternoon. It looks like in compared to yesterday, we are at 62, so not a whole lot of change there. East winds will be about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Let's get into it because I expect most of today to actually be clear. It's not until late this evening do the clouds come back, but because this storm will be rolling in our direction over the next 24 hours. Expect by midnight to start to see some rain popping up on radar, which means by 6, 7 a.m. when you're rolling out the door tomorrow morning, you're probably going to be watching for some scattered to even widespread rain. There's going to be pockets of heavier rain, it looks like, east of I-35, but this is the best looking rain chance we've had literally in weeks. Since the start of the new year, we haven't seen this kind of rain, so we're expecting a good amount here through at least the first half of tomorrow. By the time we start to hit those mid-afternoon hours, this rain clears, this storm system departing to the east will just be left with a little bit of cloud cover left behind. But how much rain could we see? Anywhere from about a quarter of an inch to pockets of one inch or more here. It all kind of depends on where those heavier showers set up. But this would be a significant and meaningful rain that we so desperately need. The flash flood threat is going to be a one out of a four 
here in our eastern counties. It does include Austin. I think it'll take a lot to see any widespread flooding, but some of those showers could certainly have a punch. As far as severe weather goes, it's only going to be in the far, far east that we'll be tracking one or two of these strong to severe storms. Right now, not outlined in the counties, but Fayette County, you're close enough to that severe risk. We'll be watching uh, for a strong thunderstorm or two tomorrow afternoon. That being said, that's round one. Just want to briefly show you where when, when round two is going to come in, and that's going to start fraud with the increase in cloud cover, and we likely will see some rain. It looks like Saturday into Sunday. So two different storm systems. The first looking real good for us here in Central Texas. Temperatures in the low 60s today. Cold front's going to help trigger some of those storms and showers tomorrow. It's also going to drop our temperatures. How about 50s? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it takes a little while to recover after this storm system. We we'll see a mix of sun and clouds by Friday. High temperatures getting back into the 60s for your weekend. Something to know. Look at your low temperatures. We're getting awfully close to a widespread freeze both Thursday and Friday. So make sure those sensitive plants and your pets are taken care of before we hit the later part of the week. This is KXAN Sports brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning to you. Cowboys season comes to an end in Northern California. They finally got that road playoff win against Tampa Bay on Monday, taking on the 49ers. Cowboys down 3-0. The field goal from San Francisco happened after a Dak Prescott interception. Prescott, though, finds Dalton Schultz. Schultz rather. Cowboys up 6-3. Extra point blocked. We know about extra point issues. And then, right before the half, Cowboys a chance to take the lead. Instead, Fred Warner with the pick. And it's the 49ers that take a 9-6 lead. Tied up at 9 and Oh, here's one of the plays of the game for the 49ers. Check out George Kittle. An absolutely spectacular one-handed juggling catch. That would take it into Cowboys territory, and they would cap the drive off with a Christian McCaffrey fourth-quarter touchdown to take a 16-9 lead, the only touchdown of the ball game for the 49ers. Cowboys with some chances, but they could never come up with a big conversion fourth quarter in scoring territory instead of a completion and a possible first down. They have to settle for a Brett Maher field goal. He did kick a couple. It's down to a four-point game, but the 49ers would come back and they would get a field goal to take it back to a touchdown game. Cowboys had a possession, had to punt it away, and they got one more and they had no chance. Here's a big third down play. Dak Prescott sacked that led to the punt and the Cowboys season comes to an end 19 to 12. How about a blast from the KXAN pass with more on this. Chris Tavares from Santa Clara. Cowboys and Niners renewing their rivalry here in the playoffs for the ninth time in these two franchises' storied histories. But unlike the last time they met here in the Bay Area, 1995, when the Cowboys went on to win their most recent championship, the Niners coming away with a win tonight and ending another season for the Cowboys. You know, you had two teams just battle, you know, battling out. We knew it was going to be a slug, slug fest, and you know, we just didn't quite, you know, just quite do enough. I mean, it's you know, you can go through the statistics, the, you know, the, the decisions, and you know, um, I thought defensively, you know, we, we did a really good job, you know, for the most part. But yeah, would we like to have a couple more stops? Yes. We, did we need more third down conversions on offense? Yes. We could use that to red zone production. So obviously, just extremely disappointed. Um, you know, this is this has been um, an incredible journey. You know, with this with this group of men, and yeah, we we just we came up came up short tonight to a, to a very good football team. Very disappointed. Uh, we weren't able to come out this one. Disappointed in my play. Uh, disappointed for the guys in the locker room. Um, special team, uh, really is. Um, guys that that do things the right way, prepare the right way, um, believe in each other, a lot of love. A week after Dak Prescott played arguably the game of his life in that wild card win over the Buccaneers, struggling here in Santa Clara, the Cowboys only scoring one touchdown today, while Prescott threw two interceptions. At Levi Stadium, Chris Tavares, KXAN News. In Waco, Vic Schaefer and the Longhorns taking on Baylor. Texas coming off the loss at Texas Tech. Shaley Gonzalez, end of the third, and Texas has an eight-point lead. This was a hard-fought physical game. Rory Harmon, the step-back jumper, it's a nine-point Texas lead. Then scary moment. Harmon goes down. She gets caught up in the middle of arms and legs, and she was down for a while, eventually able to leave the floor very slowly. Would return to the bench, but no word on her status. Longhorns, that hard-fought win, another offensive rebound, this time from Gonzalez and Texas. 
gets that second consecutive win over Baylor. It's the first time that's happened since 2010. And actually, it's a carryover back-to-back. -back. They beat Baylor in the Big 12 title game last year. Texas women back in action on Wednesday when they host Oklahoma. Texas men in action tomorrow night coming off the win against West Virginia. They host Oklahoma State. Back to you. All right, thank you, Roger. You may soon need to pay to park on South Congress. The proposal is part of a South Congress Parking and Transportation Management District proposal. The Austin Transportation Department presented this to the city's mobility committee last week. The goal is to make the parking process smoother and make streets more accessible to residents and businesses. Plan is still in its early stages, but you pay for spots through an app. In the residential areas, you would have to pay if you have a permit. But a lot of people don't like the parking anyway since they have to back in. They complain about that all the time. Um, and I think it's already hard to park in this neighborhood because they have permitted parking on all the side streets. So it's already tough to find parking and it's crowded here. The Transportation District hopes to present the plan to the full city council in March. Thanks for joining KXAN News today. You can also listen to KXAN News Nightly every weekday after 5.30 p.m. for in-depth coverage on what matters most to you.